to buying and praying with each other, eating healthy, drinking enough water, and worshiping God together in my apartment. It was the way of life of the Adventists around me that boosted my confidence towards baptism. I saw genuine love, care, and support from this group. I am happy I can meet these people. God is real. Love can break through the hardest things. This includes people's hearts and also the steel and concrete cities like Tokyo, Japan. To reach more people in this city, the Adventist Church in Japan invited the General Conference and the Northern Asia Pacific Division to partner with them to create Mission Unusual, a comprehensive church planting and disciple making movement. Tokyo is among the largest cities in the world, making it a focus for mission to the cities and global mission. A team of church planting missionaries is already on the ground, learning the language and how best to share Jesus with the Japanese. Mission Unusual Tokyo involves global mission pioneers, urban centers of influence, global mission centers, volunteers, and tent makers in a concerted effort to reach the city for Jesus. Please pray for Sayori, the first person baptized from the Mission Unusual Tokyo Initiative. And please pray for the missionaries, the global mission pioneers, and the volunteers. We believe God has big plans for this, the largest city in the world. Blessed Assurance. Do 
with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Our next song will be um, hymn number 336, There is a Fountain. Shall we gather up in the dark? Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river. The beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will wash the blue forever all the happy golden days. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with 
the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease, soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Okay, and our opening song will be This Is My Father's World, Hymn 92. If you could please stand and sing with us. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and around me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me. This is my father's world, the birds their carols rise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in all that's fair, in the I hear him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world, oh let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring, God reigns, let the earth be glad. Thank you for singing with us, you may be seated. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's so good to be here today. I'm a little nervous. I guess it's been a while. Um, I actually couldn't make it last time. I was feeling a little overwhelmed with life, and uh, as family do, they stepped in and helped me out. So, Andrea, Sandra, Elder Sandra stepped in for me last time. So, but like I said, it's really good to be here. Um, I got to serve a little bit extra this morning because. Uh, our brother Negrule is sick, so he's out today. Um, so our prayers will be with him. Well, there was a little issue this morning with the opening the school for Sabbath school. My apologies. Um, I wasn't prepared and didn't have the key. But that brings me up to this time of year. We are looking for anybody that wants to serve in any ministry. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, to me, to serve is to love. And even brings me to scripture in first peter and uh, four ten, as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of god's varied grace um, and it's so true just being here just enlightens me and makes my straight my faith stronger so thank all of you for that um, we have a visitor today i'm not gonna i'm not elder Mahea where she like makes people stand up and shake and uh I love that about her. I love that she does that, but it's not my style. But I do want to welcome Renee um, here. So, hi, Renee. Thank you for coming. We'll just get to the announcements today. Um, 
So on May 7th, we have a constituency meeting. It's at 9.30. It's for the SVCS and the preschool. I went to my first one with the academy not too long ago. It's really informal. Um, I was able to hear that Sue Kanan was um, possibly looking to travel more. Um, that's where I first heard it was the constituency meeting. So you never know what information you might get from there. So I encourage anybody to want to go. There's a citywide 40 days of prayer happening in person in Albuquerque Heights or on Zoom. Um, it's every day. It's already started and it goes to May 6th. If anybody knows that students that need financial assistance for a great Christian education, they can apply at xylascholarship.org. Um, that is done by Sister Priscilla and Pastor Mike. Um, if anybody doesn't know, that was their daughter, Zyla, um, so they set that for her. May 12th, ju joint youth vespers between our church and SVA at 630. You'll just meet at the little grassy area right between those. Um, and there will be dinner served before the worship. Graduation weekend for SVA is the 19th to the 23rd. Um, sorry, we won't be here. We'll be on vacation. So. Sorry, Caitlin. Can't be with your friends on that day. <laughs> and I know everybody's watching the news, but that Horn of Africa experiencing some of the worst droughts I've ever seen. So in your bulletins, you'll see that there's ADRA, A-D-R-A dot org, if uh, your heart speaks to you and you want to donate. June 1st to the 4th, I can't wait, Navajo Lake. Um, looking forward to being with everybody that day. And then uh, the big one is July 16th to the 20th is VBS. Um, if anybody's interested in volunteering, um, please see Sister Priscilla. And we'll get to the most important stuff, the membership transfers. Last week, Elder Jonathan mentioned uh, his brother Romero Cano is coming here from Fresno Spanish Church. Uh, he's been giving us a hard time that it's taken so long, but as Elder Jonathan pointed out, it was the Fresno Spanish Church that didn't want to let him go. Um, <laughs> so um, we are having our second reading for him transferring to our church from the Fresno Spanish Church. Um, does anyone have a motion? Thank you, okay, thank you, Rhonda. Do I have a second? Thank you, Molly. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? I didn't think so. Okay, we have one more that's going out. This is the second reading for Tom and Tracy Layton, and they are going to the East Mountain Church, and they're probably already there. Um, do I have a motion for that? Thank you, Jenny. Do I have a second? Thank you, Pastor. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed? <laughs> Didn't think so. And I guess that's it. And so now, prayer and praise. Actually, yeah. I don't know who's doing that, though. Is anybody doing prayer and praise for Sue Canaan? Because she's not here today. Pastor will do it. Greetings, everyone. We're a little bit shorthanded today, um, so if I can have some of our, our deacons, even if you're not on duty, just step up. Uh, we need to collect prayer cards. Uh, those of you who know the drill, um, they should be there in front of your pews, or there's also a stack right there in the back by the sound booth. I'll give you about a minute or so. Um, grab some prayer cards. If you have some prayer requests, I'll be checking online as well. Um, while we're doing that, I just want to make a quick plug um, every morning from 5 to 6 a.m. I said a.m. I don't know how many of you are awake during that time, but as Court mentioned already, and it's in the bulletin also, we've been doing a citywide 40 days of prayer. We started last Sunday, so we're already seven days in, and we're going to go for another 33 days straight, no breaks. It's every morning. The reason it's designed so early is so that you can um, spend time in prayer before heading out to work. So um, we've been meeting at the Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, a lot of the pastors, we've been going there. And then we've had a good number of people tuning in on Zoom as well. So the Zoom link is going to be um, there in the bulletin slash newsletter. Um, if you receive it in PDF form, you can just click on it. And that will take you right to the Zoom um, meeting room. Thank you, Peter. 
Um, and for those of you who are not able to wake up that early, um, just so you know, you can catch it later on at the Heights um, YouTube page. Um, and you can, it's not live streamed at that moment, but you can also catch it. Um, we're going through the book Steps to Christ. So um, any of you are interested, we, we are on day seven. We're, we have 33 more days to go. Um, going through the book of Steps to Christ, and we're also spending time in prayer, a good 30 minutes. So if any of you are interested in that and you think you're up for waking up at 5 a.m., please do so. If not, you can also um, catch um, a later broadcast or spend time in prayer on your own. That's uh, something that you can always do anytime. All right. Uh, there's no other prayer requests. I'm going to be reading this. I will check online. We have a few more hands. If I can get some assistance um, from our deacons and bring them up here as I start reading them. Um, this one's from Carmen. Thank you. She's asking for prayer for Susan as she battles with bone cancer. Okay, so let's keep her in mind. From Denise, her mom is flying home on Tuesday, and Abby is flying away on Tuesday. So please keep them both in prayer. This one is another one from Denise. Praise for my friend Alba, oh nice, who is improving. So thankful, thankful for your prayers. Please continue to keep her in prayer. From Ivy, for my family and friends and my surgery on Monday for a speedy recovery. We'll be lifting up Ivy in prayer, especially on Monday. Uh, this one's from Tegan for my mom and dad and for my family. From Benny, um, Sherry Black, who is in California visiting her older sister, Dolores. Dolores' son committed suicide. Please pray for um, Sherry. We'll definitely be keeping their family in prayer. Uh, from Lane, praise the Lord for the 40 days of prayer. God's power is moving on his people. Yes, indeed. And then this one, I apologize, I just literally smudged it with my hands. Um, Pathfinder Clubs, I believe this is Texaco Conference, who are participating in the Pathfinder Bible Experience in Florida. Okay, I think I have an idea who this is. I apologize, I just smudged it with my fingers here, um, but we'll keep the Pathfinders in prayer. And then online uh, from, oh, Yesenia's online, she's, she says, my brother got pinned by a truck. Please pray for him. So we'll be lifting your brother up in prayer. Um, thank you, everyone, for submitting your prayer and praise. If we didn't catch you, you know, you can give it to me at a later time. We'll be giving this to the prayer team, and they will be lifting up these requests um, for the week to come. So I'm going to ask those of you who are able to, um, if you're not able to, that's okay. Stay where you are. I'm going to ask everyone to kneel with me, and we're going to come to the Lord in prayer. As our city goes into 40 days of prayer, we pray, Lord, that this city will feel your power and your presence, and that your spirit will be at work among the people to bring conviction, Lord, but also for people to hear the gospel, to live the gospel, and be affected by it. So, Lord, I ask that your church be used in a mighty way. Lord, today I have read the prayer requests out loud. Your people have heard them. And so, Lord, I just want to take a few moments for us to say silent prayer on behalf of these people. Lord, we lift up these names. A lot of them are health related. So Lord, we ask that you bring healing. Lord, a lot of these are also for our family and friends, those who are dear to us, our children. And so we lift them up to you in prayer as well. And Lord, I ask that you be with the hurting people here in our church, those who have been um, affected by things in life, discouragement. Lord, the devil is going to do his best to bring us down, but we also know you are a Lord who lifts us up. Lord, there's things going on around the world 
and it seems like you're going to be coming soon. But Lord, we're going to lift up these people, Lord, who need you now more than ever. So Lord, I pray that you touch people's lives in the best way that you see fit. We intercede for them. But also, Lord, I ask prayer for your people that's here in this congregation. We invite your presence into our lives. And may you work your power. And may we see blessings, Lord, that we may be a blessing to others as well. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now it's for tithes and offerings. Just, uh, it's going to be for the Texaco Ministries, Colton, Caitlin, Anthony, and one more. And Val, can you guys come up, please? I need uh, some deacons up here, please. Colton, Caitlin, Val, and Min. Thank you. So, yeah, sorry. The Tithes and offerings will go to the different various ministries within the Texaco Conference. Loose will go to the church. So if the deacon and deaconesses would please stand, and we'll bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all your blessings. It is truly remarkable on how much you give. Please be with each one of us, Open our hearts so we can give, but not just give, but give joyfully. Please accept these funds and multiply them for your good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. kids let's collect the offering head to the back grab your cups 
Our storyteller today is going to be Jason DeBerg. church. Hope everybody had a wonderful week and I uh, wish you all a wonderful Sabbath. So my name is Jason and my, my helper today is going to be Colton and we're going to talk about sin. So if you would take a minute and turn to Hebrews 12, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. We meaning my daughter Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders in the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eye on, on Jesus, the pioneer and perfect of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. So, I'm a very visual person. Hope you guys are. I was expecting more kids. But, when you sin, does that not weigh you down? Right? It weighs us all down. Well, I'm going to use this vest and my buddy Colton here. So he's going to go down and do a squat. And back up. It's pretty easy, huh? Okay. So now I'll have, what is a sin? Tegan, what is a sin? Lying. Lying. Okay. So, not that Colton does, but let's say he lies. So that, that's going to weigh him down. Let's say he does another sin, right? What's another sin? What's another sin? Stealing. Okay, not that Colton does, but let's say he steals something. Let's say he gossips about somebody. Let's say 
he, what's, what's his name? Ewing? Ewing, oh, that's, that's a good one. So now, as he hands start to weigh on you, it's a, it's a, let's try another one of those. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you give us. I thank you that it's Sabbath, and I pray that everyone here goes home safely. And thank you that you forgive our sins. Amen. Amen. Okay, for special music, we have Daryl Daddy. He is from Central Church, and he is here to help us with the music today. Thank you, Corey. And that's, but it's Daddy, actually, not Daddy. Uh, last time I looked, Daddy still had three Ds in it. My name only has two Ds in it, see, so, but anyway. Uh, just, to, just a few words before I play, because this is a very special song to me. And it's one that you probably have heard many times and just didn't really think about it. But uh, it's something else maybe you not have thought about. How do you, what do you think music's gonna be like in heaven when we get there? It's gonna be glorious, I would say. And I have to be, I don't wanna get too emotional. I do get emotional about music very much, so. But uh, anyway, uh, I knew that we're gonna be able to be amazing grace. There'll be lots of the old familiar hymns and sacred songs that we all know and love so much. There might even be some of the newer praise and worship songs as well. But I think this is the song I'm about to play for you. is one that, it's a theme song, if you will, used in a, in a program that's heard every single night on uh, KS, uh, KSVA, and that is on Night Sounds, hosted by Bill Pierce, all these spiritual thoughts and things, a very meaningful program to a lot of us. But uh, the theme song was written in the early, early 20th century by a French composer by the name of Claude Debussy. And uh, anyway, it's a theme I think you're going to recognize very well, but I don't know, uh, several months ago now, I decided I've got to start, i got to play along with this song. It's just, it's just so gorgeous. But this is, this is another type of music that I think we're all going to hear in heaven. And uh, uh, it's, just, it's just that beautiful. But again, it's very short too, unfortunately. It's only like two minutes and 15 seconds. So, uh, but I hope you enjoy it. And uh, as I hope it means as much to comes, it, it will mean as much to you as it has come to mean to me. So again, this is uh, by Claude Debussy, French composer, 
It's called Bonsoir, and which in, translated into English is Beautiful Evening, actually, but it is the theme song for Night Sounds, and so uh, I hope you enjoy it. Happy Sabbath. Today our scripture reading is found in 1 John 3:18 in King James version. Sorry. It now says, "My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth." Thank you, Colton, for reading our scripture today and setting the stage. And then also for uh, Daryl Dady for doing our music. Um, you guys don't know this, but I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans. But a lot of the people that you're, you're seeing up here are coming up on the fly. Uh, we have some several uh, participants who could not be here today. And so those of you who stepped in at the last minute, that is greatly appreciated. And I think I just needed a church to hear that, um, but especially Colton, because J- um, Jason had asked if I could be the volunteer, and I said, you know what, I want other people to experience the children's story, and so thank you, Colton, for being the volunteer to bear all those sins. Uh, good morning, and happy Sabbath to all of you. Thank you for being here today, and if this is your first time worshiping with us, uh, we hope that you will come back. Uh, if you've been coming Regularly, I encourage you or invite you to, to consider um, either doing Bible studies, baptism, or um, getting your membership transferred. But that's something that you need to work out between you and the Lord. But when you're ready, uh, come see myself and one of our elders. Today, let me cover some housekeeping items, and then we'll go into our study today. I just want to cover uh, three quick things. Number one, um, last Sabbath, I talked about how many of us... Um, We're encouraged to head down to the council meeting on Wednesday um, because there was the idea that they were going to, um, what do you call this, start a brewery next to our school. And I just want to say I was impressed with the number of people who 
showed up uh, from our church, from our schools. You made your voice heard, and when it came time for a decision, um, the council voted that they would not go with the proposal. So the good news is there will not be alcohol served next to our school, all right? Now, that could still be appealed. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, the the um, group or organization, they're still up there, NCB, um, and so maybe they're going in a different direction. I'm not sure, but all I know is um, it was good to see a good turnout from our church and people making their voices heard. So that's number one. Number two, um, if we could put it up on the screen, Victor, um, this past week we had our church board meeting. Um, the numbers are probably small for you, but I just want to give an FYI of how our church is doing financially. Um, we have not met our annual budget, and we only have a couple of months left before we close out the year and then we're going to vote a new budget. Um, part of the reason could be we have a a mortgage that we have to pay now. Um, as you know, if you look next door, you'll see the fellowship hall is being um, renovated. And so we've changed what you see in the bulletin every Sabbath. The number that Jenny is putting up there now is going to be the balance that we have left that we have to pay off rather than what we're trying to raise. So that's an FYI for you all. And this is not a secret. If anybody ever wants a copy of this, I know there's some people who wanted a copy. Just let me know, and we'll either email you or get you a paper copy so that you know exactly where the church is financially. And those of you who have um, continued to support us with your donations, we want to give a shout-out and say thank you for your faithfulness. And those of you um, who are looking for projects or something to support, um, you can talk to me. You can see where we are financially. Okay. In terms of our fellowship hall, um, I don't have much news or you know more to give you than what I told you last time. We're still waiting on P and M, but I feel like once that's figured out, um, everything else will fall into place, and hopefully by the summer we'll be able to um, be using that. The third announcement that I have to make, um, I believe there's some pictures. Is um, those of you who are going to camp with us at Navajo Lake? I don't know how many who are here. We are still planning to leave the church open because um, it's a little bit further than going to Jemez for Church in the Mountains. It's about three and a half hours from here. But um, if there's only going to be 10 of you here who will be worshiping on that Sabbath, that first Sabbath in June, then we probably will close the church. Okay, so I was just curious, how many of you here are planning to be at Navajo Lake? Raise your hand. Okay, so I see maybe about a quarter, a third of the people who are here. Okay, so we will still leave church open on that Sabbath. For those of you who are on the fence, um, Sandra looked yesterday, and there's about three spots left. So if you're planning to camp, you're planning to get an RV, you need to book that real soon. Um, get with us, and we can help you if you don't know how to do that. Okay? So the first Sabbath of June, um, a good number of us will be at Navajo Lake. All right, so those are my housekeeping items. Um, I wanted to specifically say that. Um, right before the sermon, let's have prayer, and then we'll go into our quiz. Dear Lord, thank you for your presence here. Speak to us, Lord. May we live a life that glorifies you. May we live a life that shows people what the gospel is all about. And may you go where you want us to go, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you who were here last week, the quiz should be pretty easy. Um, if you were not here last week, uh, we'll get you caught up, okay? So first quiz question is, if you are an introvert, which is what some of you are, and you know who you are, um, what is one way you can share the gospel? And even if you're not, think of a good answer for this. I'll give you about 10 seconds. 10 seconds. What is one way that you can share the gospel? All right, time's up. Anybody want to throw it out to me? What is one way you can share the gospel, especially if you're an introvert? Find someone, who's not an introvert. Find someone who is not, okay? And partner up with that person. Let them do all the talking. Maybe they will share your story for you or your testimony. Thank you. Do we have another one? What else did I talk about? What's another way we can share the gospel? Okay. We can um, write it on social media, okay? We can write an article, write it in a book, especially if we're afraid of going up in front of people, then you know what? You don't even have to say anything. Write it out. That's another way that you can share it with others. Or make a video testimony that we can show in front of the people. Another one that we talked about, another way that we can um, share the gospel if we get nervous, is you don't have to do it in front of a crowd, right? 
You can share it one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Is sharing with one person easier than sharing with 20 people? For many of you, it will be easier, okay? So that's another recommendation that I have. So share one-on-one, -on -one, partner up with somebody. Um, you can share or write it on social media or in a book or in an article um, or tell somebody who can tell it for you. Let's go to the next question. What motivated the disciples to share their story or their testimony? Let me give you 10 seconds. There's not really a right or wrong answer, but I gave some specific ones, okay? All right, what do you guys think? What motivated the disciples to share their story or their testimony? You guys remember the closing song? The old rugged cross. And for the disciples, that was enough, right? They saw their leader die for their sins, but then the next um, Sunday, they saw that he resurrected, and that was a great motivating factor for them. Maybe that doesn't motivate you. I don't know. What else motivates people to share their gospel story? Maybe, oh, did anybody find the $100 bill? If you weren't here last week, you won't know what I was talking about. Okay? Nobody? It's because I found it. Okay? So, uh, just for the people who are online, you can see that it has Benjamin Franklin, right? I'm going to give it to court. Okay? Now, do you think court's going to be able to keep this a secret? Well, number one, he can't because we did it publicly, right? But chances are he's going to go and tell his wife, Pastor Mike just gave me a $100 bill. You know, he must be rich, okay? He's going to tell his family. He's going to tell other people. Why? Because he received a gift that he was not expecting, right? Salvation is a gift. And when you receive something good, your human nature is it's hard to keep it to yourself. You just have this sudden urge that you have to share it with other people. That's what the gospel is. And if you don't have that urge, and I'm not saying you're guilty of this, but maybe you need, you need to take a look at where your relationship is with God. Maybe you need to take a look at your understanding of what salvation is and realize salvation is awesome. Salvation is free. Why would you want to keep something like that to yourself? Okay? So... Um, what motivated the disciples to share their testimony? The cross, okay? It's an experience that's too good not to share. And then another one, we closed with this verse, Matthew 28. But before Matthew 28, 19, it says that Jesus had all the power and authority. And guess who he gave his power and authority to? He gave it to his disciples. And what was available for the disciples is still available for us today. So guess what? You can speak boldly because you have the power. That same Holy Spirit power is available to all of us today. All right, so we're done with the quiz. Let's go into our message today. We're going to be talking about the gospel in what? In action or actions? There's a reason why I put that S there. The gospel and actions. The last three Sabbaths, that's all we've been talking about, the gospel, right? What it means to us. But now we're going to really dig deep, and we're going to talk about what it means to have it in as part of your daily life. I believe that everyone here at some point has been impacted by the gospel, right? That's why some of you are choosing to get baptized. That's why some of you have been baptized, because salvation has impacted your life. But guess what? If we want to take the good news a step further, the gospel is not just a theological thing. Are you with me? When I say theological, it's not just something that we read about in the Bible. It's not just an intellectual thing. It's not just something that we know and that we try to understand. The gospel is also physical. Do you agree with me? Yes or yes? Yes. The gospel is not just something that we know, but it's something that we do. And so today, we're going to talk about what it means to put the gospel into actions and to incorporate it as part of our daily life. Because let's face it, a good number of you here, if I asked you, what is the gospel all about, you could tell me. But when I ask you, so how have you lived the gospel? How have others seen that in you? There's going to be some hesitation, okay? Because maybe you're thinking, maybe I haven't been living out the gospel like as I should. The good news is there's room for improvement in all of us. So the first verse we're going to read today is not the verse that Colton read, but we're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 10. All right? Who wrote the book of Luke? 
Luke. Was Luke one of the 12 disciples? No. Was Luke a tax collector? No. What was Luke's profession? He was a physician. He was a doctor. He was a well-learned man. But what, about, what I like about Luke was before he wrote this gospel version, he did his research, right? It was almost as if he was there. He was interviewing these, these people, piecing things together. And one of the stories that he includes in this gospel is found in Luke chapter 10. If you're there, I want you to say what this story you think we're going to look at is. Okay, let me help you out. Let's go to Luke 10, 25, okay? Parable of the Good Samaritan, all right? So we're going to go over this quickly. Um, what I want to pay more attention to is to the context of this story, because most of you know this story already. What's interesting is you won't find this story in any other gospel account, okay? Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25. If you're there, say amen. If you need more time, say mercy. All right, everyone's there. Let's go. Verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What is the gospel all about, class? Eternal life, right? So this is related to the gospel. Let's go to the next verse. He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Verse 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your might. How many of you here love the Lord God with all your heart? Just raise your hand. Okay. Most of us do, right? That's easy, okay? Because he first loved us. Oh, yeah, I'm going to naturally love you back. But here's the thing. He doesn't stop there. He says, and your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. Verse 28, and he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. What did Jesus say? Think this, right? Read about this. What did he say? Do. Is do something that we do? Yes, it is an action. So he says, if you do this, you will live. Verse 29, but he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Because in his mind, He's already doing the gospel. In his mind, he already has a good understanding of it. So Jesus goes into the story, verse 30. Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, why do you think it means to go down? Because elevation-wise, Jerusalem is higher than Jericho. Just like if you're in Santa Fe, is Santa Fe in a higher elevation than Albuquerque? Yes, you can feel it, right? It's a lot colder. So guess what? When you're coming from Santa Fe to Albuquerque, you are going down. So it's the same way here in Jerusalem that he's going down to Jericho. And he fell among thieves or robbers who stripped him of his clothing. What else did they do? Wounded him, departed, leaving, leaving him half dead. Verse 31. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road. Now we know this story. Are priests good people or bad people? In general, they are good people. So we're going to expect him to do something good, right? Well, let's see what happens. It says, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Verse 32. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Is a Levite a good person or a bad person? It's a good person. A Levite is someone who is involved in the sanctuary. Someone who's involved in the church, okay? But the Bible says that he passed by on the other side. Verse 33, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Is a Samaritan a good person or a bad person? According to the Jews, a Samaritan was not a good person. According to you, is a Samaritan a good person or a bad person? A person's a person, right? But if you were a Jew, he was the lowest of the low, despicable. Verse 34, so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come, I will repay you. Wow. So this is someone 
who for a Jew was not expecting to happen. It's like if you're watching a movie, it had an unexpected ending. Or if you're reading a book, it's very ironic that it ended this way when it seemed like it was going a different direction. So for the Jews, as they're listening to this story, well, it seemed like the priest would help him. It seemed like the Levite would help him. But of all the people, who helped him? The Samaritan. But here's the lesson I want you to learn. There's a lot of different things that we can pull out, but this is what I want us to pull out today. Verse 36, which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Verse 37, and he said, he who showed. He who what? Showed mercy. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. See, the gospel is a beautiful thing. But if it's only in your head and in your mind, it's only beautiful to you. What good is that? And so I, we've heard this story before, but I just want to remind us that the gospel is not just an intellectual thing. It's not just a spiritual thing. It's also a physical idea that must be acted out. It all goes together. And I think even the early church, they were starting to forget this. So guess what? John, who was a disciple of Jesus, had to give them a reminder. So let's go to 1 John chapter 3. This is the scripture reading that Colton prepared for us this morning. All right. I asked you last week, how many books do you think John wrote that we know of? At least five, right? John the Gospel, the letter 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and what's the last one? Revelation. So we're reading one of his letters, 1 John chapter 3. Now, I'm going to remind you that a lot of the stories, or not stories, a lot of the books in the New Testament were letters. How many of you have received a letter recently? Okay, maybe letters are dying. I don't know. Maybe now you get text messages or emails. Okay. But back then, when someone sent a letter to the church, guess what they would do? Someone would go up front and they would read that letter in front of the whole congregation. So, for example, if Pastor Andre, the previous pastor before I was here, he wrote a letter to the church. Do you think I would just read it and then keep it in my files? No, I'm going to come here and I'm going to read it to you, okay? So John, he, he's writing a letter here, and we're going to pick up and see what he writes. 1 John chapter 3, what verse? 18, all right? He says, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in what? In truth. What is the truth? It's this. And why would, on earth would he call them little children? Is he just writing to the children of the congregation? Was this letter designed for little kids? So if you look at the, the Greek that, that they use in the context of this, the reason he calls them little children is because they were young in the faith. Okay? When was this being written? In John's time. How long has the church existed? Not very long, right? Jesus had just gone to heaven. This is the first generation of Christians. So John had to come and remind them, hey, the gospel is not something that we're just preaching to you. It's something that's supposed to change your life so that you can do something about it and change the lives of others. So he says, my little children or my young ones in the faith, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And that's my challenge to you all. Normally, I would come to the part where this is the end game, but this is going to be a little bit longer end game. We're going to be here for a good 10 minutes or so because I want us to explore the concept of what are some things we can do so that people can actually experience the gospel. So I wrote down a few things. We're going to expand on a few of them. Number one, I already mentioned this, okay? What you put on the internet has an effect on people. Do you agree or do you disagree? Yes, it is. So every time you hit share whether it's one of our services here at school or that conspiracy theory that somebody else posted, that's going to impact a lot of people's lives. So you have the opportunity to use social media for good or for evil. Are you with me? So what you put on there, whether it's a Bible verse, whether it's an encouraging um, quote or a meme that's going to make people laugh but also has a deeper meaning, 
that's one way, guess what? That we can share the gospel with other people. Here in the church, I don't know what the um, count is going to be, but let's say there's 60 of us who are here today. That's good, right? But guess what? Let's say someone shares our service today on Facebook. That's one person. But they've shared it with, let's say, 20 people. And then those 20 people, each one of them will hit share. Okay? Do you see how fast it can multiply all by just doing one little click of a button or touch on the screen? So that's one way that we can do something physical about the gospel. But let's take it a step further. How about paying for someone's meal? How many of you have ever done that? Okay? All right. A good number of you. Okay? Uh, maybe you're going through a drive through and, and you know what, you want to do something nice, so you tell the person, I'm going to pay for the person behind me. Maybe you're at a restaurant, okay? Or maybe it's just someone that you met and they're struggling. You say, you know what, I'm going to give you some money, go get yourself a meal. Or there's other different ways to get creative with that. But I'm going to ask you to take it a step further, okay? How many of you know what these things are? Well, maybe some of you cannot see, okay? These are what we call glow tracks. Have you guys ever heard of glow tracks? Okay, I see many people nodding their heads. Guess what? Um, in the room where the youth met today, there is a whole stack of these. Is that good or bad? That's bad, because why is it in our church? It should be in people's hands, okay? And it doesn't have to be these, okay? It can be any literature that will bring encouragement or spread the gospel to others, okay? I was counting it real quickly. I think we're going to have enough. So what I'm going to do, this is my challenge to you all. I'm going to give this stack to court, and he's going to pass it to my boy. Everyone just grab one or two, okay? And then pass it around. And then once it ends over there where the tenorios are, pass it to Benny. And then Benny, gra grab one or two, and then just pass it to the person next to you. And I'm, I just want to see how many will end up with my wife, okay? If we'll take all of them, or we'll still leave a dozen over there, okay? Why am I wanting you to take this, okay? Because you all are ready to do something good, right? You're going to feed somebody. You're going to pay for somebody's meal, okay? You're going to go and visit someone in the nursing home, okay? These are all different things that we can do. But what we want to do is not only have the gospel in action, but also intellectual and spiritual. So what you're going to do is, there's three different kinds. You're going to leave one with somebody this week. How many of you are introverts? All right. This is for you. You don't even have to say anything. <laughs> Can you hand somebody something? Is that difficult? Is it easy? Okay, the next one or in a little bit, I'm going to have you speak, okay? But this one is easy, all right? Um, some people, they like to give these out like Halloween candy. That's not my recommendation because a lot of times people will see it and then they'll just throw it away, okay? You want to at least have some kind of interaction with them, all right? Let them see your face. Third thing that we can share the gospel is through feeding the homeless, doing a food bank, going to a homeless shelter. Do we do this? Is this something that you've done before? And you know, here in the church, you have the opportunity to do that. Just this past Wednesday, what did we do? What do we do every third Wednesday of the month? We have the food bank. I was not here. I was getting ready for the hearing, but I heard that there was a good number of people from our church and people who are not even from our church who are involved with the food bank. Is this the gospel in action? You tell me. Yes, it is. Are you making a difference in people's lives? Yes. And guess what, though? Doing this also makes a difference in your life. Because it teaches us to be less selfish. It teaches us what the gospel is all about. And it's not always about me, me, me. And then one more thing that I jotted down. It's praying for people. You think that's easier? That's hard. I think it's both. I remember scrolling through Facebook and I saw one of my cousins on Facebook say, thoughts and prayers. This just happened after the shooting, I think, in Tennessee, the school shooting. 
Thoughts and prayers are useless to dead children. Prayer doesn't bring change. Legislation does. Do you guys agree or disagree? Are thoughts and prayers useless to dead people? Maybe. After all, the Bible says the dead know not anything. So then who are the prayers for? The prayers are for the living, right? Does prayer bring about change? Does prayer touch people's hearts? Yes. Um, and you guys saw, thank you, Court, for doing a quick plug in the bulletin. There is uh, what we call the Xyla Scholarship. This was named after our daughter who passed away. Um, some of you are newer church members. I'm just sharing our story quickly. Our, our daughter passed away, and one of the ways we cope with it is by starting a scholarship in her name. You guys know I don't make a lot, we don't make a lot of money. We're not rich. So what we've done is um, every year that she would have been in school, in Adventist education, we save that tuition, and then we give that back to other people who might need it. So it's not a lot, but it makes a difference for a lot of people. And I remember this happened in 2016, and we were going through a hard time. And I am one who believes that there is power in prayer. And before they declared our daughter, you know, had died, you know, we were praying that, you know, she would live. And we believed it with all our hearts. But she didn't make it. So is there power in prayer? There is. Because you know what Priscilla and I, what got us through those dark times, Samuel as well, is the fact that we knew that people were praying for us. And yes, the Holy Spirit was at work. But there's just something about going through hard times, but knowing that people are thinking about you. This morning at 5 o'clock, we spent time in prayer, and we took people's prayer requests. And some of those people were all from different churches. Some of those people had never met each other. But you know what? It's the fact that somebody else is praying for you. It's the fact that you shared something, you were vulnerable, and someone's going to take that prayer. It's what we call intercessory prayer. Do you guys know what intercessory prayer is? It's when someone is praying on somebody else's behalf. And guess what? This is an opportunity for us to share the gospel. Yes or yes? Yes. So guess what? Now we're going to take it a step further. You got your glow track? Okay, that's assignment number one. You're going to find somebody that you're going to give that to. Okay? Um, can you just give it to them? Sure. But I would say give it to them with, with water, with money, with something else. Okay? This one that I'm going to give to you next, I have a stack of our prayer cards. Okay? Most of you will fill this out regularly and you bring it up front. But guess what? I want you to grab one. We're going to pass this out. But this is not for you. Did you hear me? This is not for you. Who is it for? It's going to be for somebody else, okay? This week, some of you are going to go to work. Some of you are going to go to class. Some of you are going to be flying in an airplane. Some of you are going to be waiting at Walmart, at the cashier, or Albertsons, and that person is going to make a comment. I don't know what it is. But if you see an in to talk about something spiritual, that's God giving you the window. You have a choice. You can do something about it, or you can just let that opportunity pass. It doesn't make you a bad person, okay? So I'm going to have court, same thing, okay? Everyone grab one or two. We should have enough. I asked Jenny to print extra ones, okay? So your second assignment for this week is find someone that you're going to pray for, okay? And then this, this is a sample line that you can use. Maybe someone told you, you know what? Oh, man, my family is going through a hard time. And you can say something like this. You know what? I belong to the Kerala Seventh-day Adventist Church. We would like to pray for you. How would you feel if you knew that there were 60 to 80 people praying about your situation? How would that make you feel? That would make you feel prayed for and loved. And so that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to find someone that we're going to pray for. If you find more people, come back to church and get more prayer cards. Okay? But guess what? Prayer does work. But prayer is not just an intellectual thing. 
It's also a what? It's an action. What have we been talking about this week? Action. Or this sermon. Action. Action. Doing something about it. There's many people who are praying that we would get a favorable decision for the hearing at the village of Corrales. Because we don't want a brewery or alcohol being sold right next to our school, right? So people are praying. Now, if, if people only prayed and did nothing else, do you think good, uh, something good would have happened? I think so. But guess what? We took it a step further. A lot of us showed up there at the Corrales Courthouse. So not only did we pray about it, but what else do you think we did? There was action, all right? So guess what? Action also needs to come with prayer. If somebody tells you, can you please pray for me because um, I'm hungry, don't just go to them and say, you know what, dear Lord, please feed this person, amen, and then go about your way. If God has given you the opportunity, what should you do? Feed them, okay? Now, it's funny, in the Bible, um, Jesus tells Judas, the poor you will always have with you, right? Right? One of the ministries that we've taken a break from is feeding the homeless. We're not doing that anymore. But all it means is that opportunities for somebody else to step up. All it means is that maybe God has called us to do something else. The question is, what is that? So in closing, I'm going to share a verse from you from the book Ministry of Healing. How many of you have ever read the book Ministry of Healing? Okay, so about a quarter of you. Great book. Not just for people going into the medical field, but for the church. It says here, here's the quote, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Whose method is this? It's Christ's method. What is that method? It says the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. You're like, oh, but I don't like people. You know what? Even introverts, even this you can do. All right? He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and as a result, what happened? He won their confidence. Then, only then, what did he say? Follow me. Here's the thing. The gospel, you have to meet people's needs. That's why action is important. That was Christ's method. He healed the physical needs of the people. He fed them. He set the captives free. He gave them encouragement. And then he made the appeal. Come and follow me. So church, this morning, I want to encourage you. This, this is the end game. Step out of your comfort zones. Share the gospel in a tangible way. Maybe you don't like these methods that I showed you. This is just... Something to get started to people who haven't been doing it. If you're already doing this, great. If you're already handing glow tracks to people, great. If you're already praying for people, great. But this week, this is my challenge to you all. Find one person that you're going to give that prayer card to and let them know that we are praying for them. So whoever is doing prayer requests next week, you're going to have your hands full. okay? And also give them a glow track and let them know that Jesus loves them. How many of you think you can do this this week? Okay? All right. There we go, everybody. Let's have prayer, and then we'll invite um, Al and the team for our closing song. Dear Lord, thank you for what you've done in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for showing us what salvation is all about. And you have called us to share the gospel with other people. And I think a lot of times we've fallen short. Maybe we understand it, but then that's it. So Lord, I ask this week for every single person that's here, even the littlest of kids, Lord, that you're going to give us a window of opportunity to talk about you. But not just words, Lord, to show them what you are all about. Whether that's through prayer whether that's through giving someone water, whether that's sharing an encouraging word to them and letting them know that you love them. So I pray, Lord, that here in the Kerala Seventh-day Adventist Church, that we will rise up to this challenge. And just for this week, Lord, we can make a difference.
in the lives of 80 to 100 people. Lord, we're excited for this, and I know that you will do this through us, Lord. Thank you for being with us, and may you give boldness and courage where we need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you could please stand and sing our closing song with us, hymn number 573, I'll Go Where You Want Me to Go. our heads for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Those of you who are in Sabbath school, teachers, stick around. I believe you have a meeting, and the rest of you will see next week. <laughs>